In today's live stream, we're going to be, I'm going to be showing you how to practice the second serve return. And the first live stream of this kind, I was, that happened a couple days ago, I was practicing returns on the first serve. And I made a video on my main YouTube channel titled how, how I was able to improve my return to serve. And I highly encourage you that you check out this video. It's on the main YouTube channel, Intuitive Tennis. And what happened was because of a lack of match play, a lack of practice, my return got worse, which led me to do a lot of research on the return to serve, studying the greatest returners of all time, which are, in my opinion, Roger Federer. Andre Agassi and Novak Djokovic and I made a lot of adjustments on my return of serve. In that uh, YouTube video that I'm referring to, referencing to, I changed my intention on the return. You can take a look, it's very interesting. It's a mental switch that helped me tremendously, but I also changed my grip. I changed my stance. I changed several things on the return of serve, but most importantly of all, I practiced a ton of returns that is the game changer guys without practice without getting the reps in all the theory in the world is not going to help you and i was doing a lot of practice and now i'm returning as good as i ever have if not better so in today's video i want to present how i practice the second return of serve milan is your second serve warmed up yep. Good. here can you go on the other side i know it's sunny all over there but you serve second serves and you bring me the big heat, the massive kick, the sick kick. You you give me the best second serve you got. And I see what I can do. We play out the point afterwards, okay? Play out the point, okay? All right. Okay, guys, so you heard it. We're gonna, I'm gonna return, we're gonna play out the point. Now, I'm only gonna feature half of the court, so if I get sent towards the do side, you're not gonna see me. But the important thing is for you to be able to track what I do on the return of serve, that's what this video is all about. I'm gonna be Mike today, okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna change things up and I'm gonna mic myself throughout the point. So you might hear a couple of grunts here and there. Uh, I'm gonna try really hard not to grunt and to remain quiet. Uh, but if you happen to hear some noises, I apologize in advance. All right, we're already warmed up, so we're ready to get started. All right, here we go. Okay, I missed that half court forehand, which by the way is another thing that has to be practiced a lot. I find that because of a lack of match, but because of a lack of practice, my half court forehand is worse than it used to be. I'll never forget my dad who recently passed away. Rest in peace. He always used to say, Nick, the half court used to be your territory. This is where you used to dominate from. And now all of a sudden you're missing from there. But I know why I'm missing because I'm not practicing the half court. I'm not training and therefore my half court shots have gotten a lot worse. But that return was good. So what I'm trying to do here is trying to hit as many forehand returns as possible. I'm trying to put pressure on Milan right off the bat. And I'm aiming, aiming straight through the middle of the court. Oh, okay. There I got handcuffed. I got handcuffed because he hit like a really good second serve and I didn't move out of the way quickly enough. Let me try it again. I gotta move a little bit early. Okay, that worked better. Now here's the, the key to running around your backhand. You have to be very proactive. You have to get a move early prior to the opponent making contact. If you make a move to the backhand side where you're trying to run around your backhand, Around the contact, you're not gonna make it. You're gonna be too late. So there's a proactive move that has to be made early in order for it to work. Okay, the next one, I'm gonna do some backhand returns. Okay, that's an interesting serve that he hit. So, my thought process is that anything that's like central in the box, like let's say from here to here is a forehand. There's no reason for me to hit a backhand there. 
where it doesn't require also a lot of movement, I can sometimes just be stationary instead of the forehand because as you guys probably know, the best place to stand on the return is close to the doubles alley. So anything central is a forehand. If the ball indeed goes more towards the single slant, I will hit a backhand. Thank you, Milan. So for example there, he hit a second serve close to the single slant. That's obviously a backhand. The only way it wouldn't be a backhand if you proactively prior to the serve starting decided to hit a forehand return and run around. But generally now I'm trying to go hard, taking full cuts and going right through the middle. Oh, oh I have, though I got, that was actually a really good serve. Something happened to the bounce. Milan, was that kick or slice? Kick. kick. It was a weird bounce. He went like, I don't know, it was unpredictable now. No, 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 you do whatever you want, man. Don't tell me. You give me the best second serve you got. But there I was so busy talking, I didn't prepare for that return. So I'm going to be quiet now, really concentrate and keep my intensity levels up because the intensity is the most important thing, not only on the first serve return, but on the second serve return as well. I got to keep my intensity high and keep my feet moving. So here I'm going to shut up and concentrate on the return. No! Why? Why not keep going to his forehand? All right, there he surprised me with a serve down the tee, which you always want to be ready for. You never know when an opponent is going to change things up and go down the tee, so you have to be ready. That's a great serve, Milan. Best serve you hit so far. Not a bad return, actually. I just didn't finish it. It was a little bit of a shallow swing pad. I have to go up with the racket more. That return was a lot better, a lot better. Good finish, good preparation, good intensity. Guys, the key to returning second serves is intensity. Now, a lot of you guys at the rec level actually struggle with super weak serves, like dinks and stuff like that. A lot of people don't realize how difficult those type of serves are at the recreational level. These are very tricky to return. And one of the issues that players face is they underestimate those serves. They're very nonchalant. They don't have a lot of intensity, a lot of footwork, and they are forced to improvise on really weak, on really defensive serves. Uh, right here, I'm gonna keep my intensity up. Here we go, come on. That was actually a little bit of a miss hit. Again, more footwork, more intensity. I did not get a good hit on that. Not a good hit at all. It was off center, and I felt I caught it a little bit behind me. Here we go, more intensity, more feet, Nick. Come on. That was actually better. Took it a little bit early. I probably should have stepped up to that a little bit. Let me try again. On right, this one, I'm really gonna, I'm gonna up the Intensity factor. All right, here we go. Oh, ah, I missed it again. Let me try another one. Not that great of a return, but a pretty good rally. Some good forehands there. Sometimes, guys, when you're not feeling it on the return, like for example, right now I'm not feeling my back end that much, you try to reduce the swing speed a little bit. You still take a full cut, but maybe reduce the swing speed to 
between 50 and 75 percent until you start feeling it again. Oh. Much better return, much better return. Okay, I'm gonna do one more backhand on this side and then I'm gonna start running around again. The backhand was much, much better. So the key on the return is depth. Depth is key, guys, because leave anything short, the other opponent's gonna be able to take advantage of it. No, again, I'm talking in the middle of my return. Shut up, Nick. All right, shut up and concentrate. Go again, Mila. try one more back and return. I did not like that one. A slight miss hit. I wasn't in a good area there. It was slightly off. Slightly too far away. Try again. Intensify your footwork. Come on. And concentrate. Okay, here's my forehand. That felt good, the forehand. Actually, just the location was Low percentage. We're going inside out. Oh, again, it's jumping on me, I'm not moving. Come on, stop being so stationary. Stay on your toes. Milan, do a few more on this side, okay? Not feeling my back end today. Forehand is okay, back end is no good. Here we go, I got a stupid train again. My God. It's gonna be a five minute train. Yeah, it's one of those long trains! Stop! So annoying. So annoying. All right, now it's time to get your composure back. I don't know if you guys can hear anything. I'm sure you heard that scream. I apologize, but this is a live session. This is a real deal, man. It's a live training session where there's ups and there's downs. It's not all rosy in tennis. So you gotta go through the hard work and figure it out out here. All right, come on. Again, not a good return. Very defensive, not a good contact, not a good position I was in. I gotta find a way to make contact just slightly more out front. I'm catching it behind me a little bit. Come on. <sighs> Terrible return, so bad. So freaking bad. I'm gonna run around this one just because I have to uh, uh, get my confidence back. So I'm running around here aggressively in our forehand because the forehand is doing a lot better in the backhand right now. And then he hits an ace. Great. That's the risky thing about running around your backhand is that if the opponent sees you in, your, in the, his peripheral vision, you might get burned. A little bit long, Milan, go again. Oh, the train is gone. Come on now, come on. I'm gonna try again, running around strong. A fast first step.
Ah, that was not bad. Try it again. Not bad at all. It's a little bit late on that. I switch my thoughts over to positive thoughts. You get angry when you get frustrated. Everybody's a little different. Me personally, I don't play well when I'm angry. Come on. I was on the line, Milan. It was good. Okay, I made a couple of returns. Let me try another backhand with more footwork this time. Great backhand, Milan. His best shot is a backhand down the line. He's so good at backhands down the line. I've seen him do it from like really tough positions on the court. He's got a phenomenal backhand. All right, let me try again. I gotta put more power. I'm not hitting the backhand return hard today. I have to take a full cut to have high intensity and be in a good position. Come on. That was probably the best one I hit, and he still somehow shoveled it back in on the line. I'm gonna try it again. Come on. <clears throat> now, forehand is fine. Forehand is fine. I don't care about forehand. He's backhand right now. Come on. I need a backhand right now. Be like a couple more. I want to make sure I hit a couple of good backhand returns before we switch over to the other side. <clears throat> that wasn't. It. That was. That was not good. That was not good. That was late. I was aiming cross court there. Just not comfortable today on the backhand side. I'm taking the return at uncomfortable heights, which is due to a lack of footwork i just don't have enough intensity i don't have enough setup steps i'm letting the ball play me so i gotta fix that that's better oh strong milan very strong again these returns are so weak i would say they're like 40 percent power level 50 maybe max Let's try it again. Too good. Here, Milan. All right, here we go. Come on. Long, actually. Do it again. Too good, Milan. Just not getting any depth. Let me try one more. Last one, and then we're gonna to switch to the other side. Just unable to get power. Oh! Ah, one more, Milan. One more. Footwork, positioning, intensity. Let's get this. Come on. Oh. <clears throat> that was probably the best one I hit so far. Okay. Now let's switch the other way, okay? Oh, let's go to the other side. This is not, not happening. Quickly. No breaks. Come on. Quickly. Super quickly, man. Super fast sip. This is a real workout here, no breaks. <clears throat> it's hot out here. Milan, what's the temperature? It's like 95? Yeah, probably. probably 95, maybe more, even, maybe 90, closer to 100. But it's the humidity that's a killer in Florida. It's the humidity that's an absolute killer. So a lot of people can't handle it. I got a lot of students who are having a hard time right now from a physical standpoint which you will see in some videos that are coming up on the main 
YouTube channel, channel at Intuitive Tennis. You're gonna see a lot of, a lot of players struggling with the heat. All right, Milan, let's go this side, play it out, okay? Generally, my back end is better from this side. I will say that. It's always been the case that my back end return is better from the deuce versus the add. That was a pretty decent return there. Again, no footwork, just standing there. Come on, high intensity. Forehand's feeling great today. Forehand's feeling really good. So backhand is feeling good too from the baseline. Like if I'm in a baseline rally, backhand's feeling good. Just a return of serve, but I can turn this around. I can turn this around and start returning. Great backhand returns. Better. Okay, that was a better return. Much better, just a little short. I can get that deeper, I'm looking good. Now generally, if you're directing second serves and you do a kick to the forehand that's not placed well, there's one of the easiest serves to return on the do side. Oh. <clears throat> Too good, Milan. So it's of the utmost important that if you're working your serve, that you practice kicking towards the uh, tee. Because if you leave a kick too central, guys can quickly run around that and smack forehands very easily. Bilal, that's so nice. Yeah, that's no problem, man. You deserve it. You deserve it for being fast. But that was the best backhand return I hit today. I was very happy with that. It's an unlucky point. I win that point nine out of 10 times. I don't, I don't care about the left cord. <clears throat> okay, come on. It's better on this side. But still, he's serving well though. You see these serves are placed really well. They have decent height on them. They're not too fast, which is, I think was messing me up. They're a little bit slower then. I would prefer actually a little bit more pace because I feel like that's my hard time today, generating my own pace. I feel like if I would get a little more pace from the opponent, I would return a lot better. So this is the tricky thing. Like I told you guys, a lot of, many recreational players struggle with returning complete dink serves. He's got the sun in his eyes. The sun is really bad this time of the day on that side. But if I put the camera over there, you guys, I'm not gonna be able to see much. <clears throat> and the forehand is looking good, even though I, like, I hit that way late, of course. I'm still able to control my forehand really well. My forehand return is feeling pretty clean today. Uh oh. Milan, you got another racket? Huh. What string was that? Never. I swear, I. Uh, probably I break it maybe once a month, once every two months. Rarely. I used to break it like. If I had a match, I would need at least three rackets because there's a chance that, I, chance that I can break a string every set. And so now that's gone down a lot simply because I don't play anymore. So now the strings last forever. I will say that the materials have changed where the strings are lasting longer anyway, regardless of how much you play. Guys, there's so many of my students that don't get their rackets restrung. They play with like Luxilon and stuff like that. They literally have the strings on there for like months, if not six months to a year. Sometimes they don't change it because it's not breaking. So you shouldn't do that. The strings go dead very quickly. 
that was a good return actually. That's probably one of the better ones I've made. Okay, come on. Come on, keep working hard. Keep working on positioning intensity and taking full cuts, full rips, come on. Best return I did hit today. That was excellent. Excellent return. She's getting better. I'm getting there slowly but surely. All right, one more and then it's break time. Take a little break. All right, one more. I'm gonna do a four. One more time. That was actually felt pretty good. Just didn't get out of the way fast enough. A defensive machine. This guy is so good defensively. You really have to put the ball away or he's gonna, he's gonna get it. Didn't really do anything wrong there. I hit the good shots. All right, one more, come on. Come on. Go again, that's a terrible return against Shank. Shank, shank, shank. <laughs> ah. All right, that's enough. Forehand is good, backhand is not, not good, but we got a little better towards the end. Milan, let's take a little break, okay? Ah, and now I'm feeling it, man. Yeah, man. Because in the sun, you're gonna die. It's a little dangerous. You gotta get out of the sun. You gotta get out, my friend. Get out while you still can. It's horrible, right? There's so many distractions on these courts. It's a, either guys like, Blowing leaves, cutting down palm trees, or it's horrible motorcycle noise, Harley Davidson yeah. style. Or it's the train passing by. But that's why I love these courts, man. Yeah. Why have everything nice and rosy when you play tennis? Why not deal with challenges? And why not deal with annoying things so you can work on your mental strength? And uh, you know, it's easier said than done. When that train passes by, I want to rip the hair out of my head. I go insane off a train, man. That noise just hits me different. How about you, Milan? Yeah. Here, take this mic. You can hold it. You don't have to. Just talk into it. Yeah, definitely a lot of distractions in these courts. What's and not, not only that, but the sun here is more intense than... You literally... I know, yesterday I went on that side. That? If you look, you hit a serve for a split second yeah, afterwards. You're blind. You're blind. You don't see anything. Yeah, and it's you hard kind of to have see. to find... You, your vision comes back. And then you might be able to hit the ball properly on the next shot, but yeah. you definitely are going to go blind. Yeah, especially that side, yeah. yeah. One second after your serve, you, you have go, a hard time seeing. You go blind. So when he hits a, a very fast forehand, mm -hmm. deep down the, the deep in the middle, for example, I feel like I'm late, <laughs> at least by a well, second Your second every time. serve was, was accurate today, man. You it was really... good, yeah. I, I do feel like I serve much better with a Babolat. Oh yeah. I feel like, and I feel like I have a little bit more control. Why don't you play with the Babylon? Why are you messing around with Diadem, man? Well, I coach, so this yeah. is a little bit easier for me for just, you know, coaching. Yeah. But as far as playing for real, the Babylon is uh, my preference. Now, don't ask me to string your racket. <laughs> okay. Can you not do that to me? <laughs> don't worry. I retired from stringing. I know a guy that does it. They're good, okay. The only way I'm willing to string is by hand now. I've given up the machine, man. No more. It's a lot. I strung my whole life. I was even a stringer at uh, at a hundred thousand dollar ITF in Rockford, mm -hmm. Illinois. Really? Yeah, women's. And uh, I was the official stringer. No, really? Yeah. And I'll never forget. Um, I did not know how to string the Yonex racket with four knots. Yeah. I could only string with two knots or yeah. three knots. I don't remember. And then this one girl, I forget her name. She was a good player, top <laughs> two hundred. She raised hell, man. She came into the office where we were stringing at and was complaining how. 
I strung her racket wrong. Really? And I was like, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. I just don't know how to do it. Yeah. I don't know how to do it. And then she went to the tournament director and said, the guy, the stringer here sucks and stuff like that. Really? Then, that's not that's not all, man. There was another player. <laughs> it's horrible. Who was even even higher ranked. I forget the name. And I was stringing A female, a, a woman player? Yeah, yeah. And and I remember I broke her racket. Oh, it's horrible. It snapped. It oh, happens really? sometimes. Like one out of a hundred rackets will just pop on the stringer. It's horrible. And I broke her racket and I was like, oh my God, what do I do now? And then yeah. the tournament director was able to go to a tennis shop and get the same kind of racket. New one. Do new, you, new one, yeah. Do you think these top level players, whether that be WTA or ATP, yeah. do you think they have someone that travels with them that does the stringing or do you think they just <clears throat> give it to whoever's there? Depends on the level of the player. Say like, the top ones, like top 20. I don't know, because I never, you know, I never been around Listen, that circle. I know for a fact there's a company called, I think it's P10 or something like that. I don't know the exact name, something with P. And it's a company that um, strings rackets for the top players. It's very expensive. I think you have to pay them like 20 grand a year or something like that. Really? To handle your stringing. And I could have all this wrong. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. But So the top players have stringers. Some have personal stringers. Others use services where they get their rackets strung. Because I'm so assuming yeah. every match they start, they have a freshly strung racket, right? Or you well, think, you think you they know, can use the same like ones? Pete Sampras was the, like the first guy that started that, where he would get all his rackets restrung after every match. Really? But that's not it. He would also get all the rackets restrung after every practice. Really? And you're talking about like 10 rackets. Wow, yeah. Yeah, because he was so particular about tensions and stuff like that. But then there's other players like Nikolai Davidenko, yeah. who would play until it popped. Really? Like what I do. I don't... I yeah, don't, well, most of us do that. But um, that 99% level. do that. Even at an ATP level? No, I wouldn't say ATP level. Oh, That's I different. see. Yeah, but 99% yeah, yeah. of tennis players just wait until the thing pops. Yeah, but I know for a fact, for example, the best, maybe not even the best, but like say top 50, they tend to have a person that handles all the tickets, hotel Well, that, of course. Yeah, they, they, yeah. Can't they can't do that. They have to do it. They have I, I, I saw an interview with Borna Chorich. Yes. And he said in, in Croatian how he was talking about those things and he said how... Um, mm -hmm. Top 100 can make a decent living or very good living. Yes. When you are like 150, you can still make a living, but you are most like surviving. I think nowadays you can do better than back in the day because they yeah, increase yeah, the prize sure. money so much. Raise the prize money so yeah. much, yeah. On the Grand Slam, so right. if you make, yeah. if you play first round Grand Slam the whole year, that's 200 grand right there. Yeah, it is. I know you have to pay taxes yeah, and all yeah, that. Right, I'm right, aware right, of that, right. but like that you wasn't necessarily the case back in the day. So yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe it's like back in the day, the break even point, meaning that like where you actually was making money, yeah. were making money was 180. 180. So I wonder if that's changed, if the break even point has gone down in the rankings because there's more money available. Yeah, right. But right I don't right. know because they did raise the money slightly in the futures too. Not much though. You know? Yeah. It's still See, very hard to make a living. The, prob the problem with, uh, this is just uh, my opinion, of course, but the problem with prize money increases on the professional tennis tours is that they, they're used for marketing purposes oh, meaning that they will do an incredible increase of prize money for the winner right 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 they can right put that in the paper right and present a check at the end of the tournament right and it looks great right so they will raise the prize money where Djokovic doesn't care if he gets 3.4 million or 2.6 million yeah right he doesn't care about that yeah he doesn't care at that level. When they have hundreds of millions, you don't care about that. But that looks good for marketing purposes. Now, yeah, right. It doesn't do anything for tennis to increase the first round prize money at a futures. Right. Where that would have a huge impact for the players. A huge impact, It would right. help them yeah. tremendously if you gave them more money for losing the first round of the futures. I agree, 100%. But that doesn't happen. That 100%. money has always remained low. It has barely gone up in the last yeah. 20, 30 years. And, yeah. and if you think about it, like you go to the future and you win the tournament, back in the day it was like you got 1,500 bucks, now maybe you get 2,000 or 2,500. You pay taxes off of that, you calculate your, your travel expenses, you win a futures and you break even. If you have right. a coach, you might even lose money. So Yeah, and that's horrible because that's such a high level of tennis. It's an incredibly high level of tennis. It's insanely high, you know? Yeah. And, and you look at the guy, uh, Tennis Brothers, have you yeah. seen that channel? No. He covers, like he's trying to get an ATP point, he already got a few points in doubles. Oh, I think I've heard about that channel, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a good channel, it's blowing up like crazy. It's getting like, every video gets at least 100,000 views. And um, he features matches and you see these guys play. Everybody's so good. The level is incredibly high. And you know Everybody what, yeah. can play. And the reason they do that is most viewers that watch tennis, yeah. 
they don't understand tennis. So they say, because I, I remember I grew up in Croatia, the people that plays bets, especially the people that plays bets, they think, oh, Challenger that plays, sucks. That plays bets? Yeah, like, you know, they bet their money on matches. Yeah. They only okay. watch the top ATP. The rest mm -hmm. suck mm -hmm. in their heads. So no one's watching. And if no one's watching, then the, the directors of tournaments, they don't have the incentive to push that forward, right? They only push they only push in the market like top ATP levels because that's what the majority of the people are watching. Yes. Because the majority of the people, they don't understand tennis. They think, oh, someone's like ranked 700, that's bad. Right. But you know, in reality, it's like extremely high level you know 700 in the world is just an extremely high level yes and many people that just watch tennis recreational that never played at that level yes they don't understand it they think unless you are like top 50 you suck you know <laughs> I, think there, I think there's a lot of truth to that yeah i think the educated tennis fans understand right the different levels right right yeah you, you're a casual tennis fan is clueless right yeah you are right but yeah i think that's where you you know it depends on what what uh, uh how much knowledge you have in a game of tennis but yeah you're right i've heard stuff like that i've i've seen see i have personal experience with this because i used to do you know i have an instagram account i'm closing in on 100k yeah you told me you are not impressed with me until i get 100k <laughs> you. you said this to me <laughs> no. i'll never forget this i said i said to you i said to you congratulations on 90k and that was literally two weeks ago and now how much do you have now 94? I don't even know. 94, yeah. That's 4,000 in less than you know, about right, two weeks. Whatever. But in any case, <laughs> I'm closing in on a, on, a, on a 100K. We'll make a big party when I hit Okay, 100K, there we okay? go. We'll go party. But um, I, when I first started on Instagram, I was doing swing path tracing. You know what I mean by that? No. So I would use a combination of apps, and I would trace the tip of the racket throughout the stroke. Mm -hmm. And... I will make a vid I would make a video from that. And it was absolutely fascinating to watch. You can see the swing path. You can see how the racket goes back and then and then goes goes forward and then goes back up. Yeah. And it would create these beautiful like artistic videos um, that almost look like paintings. And then at the end of the video I would put like a black screen and I would just show the swing path without the player. Mm -hmm. And it looked absolutely beautiful, like a flowing stroke as if an artist was drawing a picture. Well, which I think is, has a lot of value when you think about a stroke like a painting. If, that, if you have that in your head, it's going to make your stroke more continuous, more fluid. Yeah. It's going to also make it prettier. Yeah. If it's hacked up lines like that, yeah, that, right, that, right. that that's, Choppy, not gonna, yeah. that's not going to look like a good painting. Right. Okay? So in any case, I was doing that, and I would use the best players in the world. But after you know, doing Federer a bunch of times and Djokovic and Nadal, I started doing some more obscure players. Like, I remember doing Bouchard, yeah. I was doing Halep, I was doing Tomic. I was doing a lot of different level players. And boy, if you would have seen the comments under someone like a Jeannie Bouchard or a Bernard Tomic, they were getting absolutely destroyed in the comment section. Really? It's crazy. And it was all like, oh, you, they don't know how to play tennis. They're so bad. They suck yeah. so bad. And that's what I'm saying. That's exactly your point. People like that, where exactly. The, the person who's a casual tennis fan looks at those type of players like garbage, and I would say maybe some tennis fans are, might be educated in tennis, but they're just ignorant. Right. And they will make, make statements like that. Right. And as I well. see so all over the place. That's why I understood that anytime I get a bad comment on social media, I don't take it to heart at all. Yeah. Because I know that someone like a Jeannie Bouchard, who was a junior Grand Slam champion, a Wimbledon finalist, number five in the world, was getting absolutely destroyed. Someone like a Bernard Tomic, who was like number one junior. Right, extremely talented. Um, yeah. He was, I don't know his top ranking, was close to top 10, I think. It was yeah. top 20 at least. Yeah, crazy uh, talented. He was getting destroyed. Boy, don't even bring up Ivo Karlovic. Right, Ivo yeah. Karlovic is a freaking legend. He's maybe right. the greatest server in the history of tennis. Right. I put Ivanishevic as better, but I think those two, in my opinion, are the greatest servers. Right. Karlovic and Ivanishevic. Um, closely followed by guys like, you know, Sampras Becker. Yeah, crazy. Isner. Crazy. Kyr I'll put Kyrgios in there too, but... Kyrgios, yeah. Radic, I'll put in there as well. But um, if you took a poll of like 100 people yes. to comment on, on college strokes, I would tell you at least 90% who would have a negative opinion about this guy. Yeah, that's just And this guy's an absolute legend of a tennis player. Yeah, by the way, very good forehand. Very, very good forehand. Dude, how about his back and slice? Back and slice, exactly. And then closes the it's net. There's so nothing you can do. It's so deceiving. If you saw Kiko College in person, you wouldn't understand how good of a tennis player he is. He's, yes. he's actually a really, really good athlete too. Yes. If Given you his see, height, yes. If you see him without a shirt, the guy's absolutely shredded. Yeah. He's ripped. He's got a six-pack. He's muscular. Yeah. He moves extremely well for his height. Yeah, I, you I agree. 
People don't realize to get to that level, Ivo Carlos was top 20 in the world. You cannot get to that level. Even yes. you can't even get into the top 1,000 if you suck. Right. But people think he sucks. Why? Because they're comparing Carlos to someone like uh, Kyrgios or you know guys who are very agile and they look great on the court. And he obviously is not as talented as those guys, yeah. athletically speaking. Athletically, exactly. But so, wise, it's just... but, but if you if you understand tennis, you know that yeah, you face Ivo Carlos on the court, you're gonna lose. Yeah, of you're course. Lose. But he beat Djokovic and. Really, the way he's built, his height, yeah. he has to play tennis the way he plays. Of course. There's, nothing, of there's course. no other style he can utilize. Of course. So the style of the game really depends on the physicality of yourself. Of course it does. You, if, why would, like, for example, if, if, if you tried to play like me. Yeah, it wouldn't work. And I tried to play like you. Why would, with, what sense would that make? Right. And by the way, I tr there were times in my junior career where I tried to play like you. Yeah. And my dad would yell at me. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, you know, five meters behind the baseline. Because I was like, there were some portions of my junior career where I was like in love with uh, clay court specialists and I was trying yeah. to imitate them. I was like grunting and standing almost at the back yeah, fence right. and rallying all day long. Yeah. And my dad was like, what are you doing? Like that's it. So yeah. of course your game has to match yeah, exactly. your genetics. Exactly right. Milan, exactly. how about we play a let's, tie break? Let's do it. Let's, let's do it mic'd. Okay. Here, clip your mic. Let's do it, mic, so people can hear our thoughts. Uh, yeah, clip it like that. And let's just play one tie break. We can go up to ten. Now let's go up to seven. Now let's go up to ten. Why not? Let's see if this thing is even on still. Maybe my camera overheated. Oh, it's still on. Milan, let's go up to ten. Why not? Okay. Coach Nick, just make sure this mic is still working. Okay, say something. Say test, test. Test, test. It works. Now, last time, Milan, when I, we did this, we had a great talk, and I predicted the exact score of the Serena match, remember? Yes. And um, that portion of the last life was cut out. I predicted the Serena win, the exact score, right, Milan? Yeah, but she won the second match, too. <laughs> no, I was just kidding. <laughs> it wasn't you, you I said did, she would win. I didn't, pre I didn't no, pretend exactly. the exact, I didn't predict the exact <laughs> score, but I did say she was gonna beat Contivate. Now, that portion of the live was, Unfortunately, the mics weren't working. Is the reception so better here for the live? I think it's slightly better. Slightly better? But it's still not perfect. We're still, mm -hmm. guys, we're still trying to figure out our reception issues and our audio issues, so I apologize. Yeah. But in any case, we're gonna play a uh, tie break up to 10 and we're gonna feature it right here. We're both mic'd. Okay. Milan? Let's do it. You wanna? Um, let me serve first. Okay. And I'll give me first serving because I haven't served yet. Okay, so if you make a double for the, you go again. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, here we go. Guys, my shoulder is still kind of wrecked, but it's feeling better. I stopped doing gym and I stopped doing push-ups so my shoulder can heal. So I'm gonna serve at about 75% power. Which sometimes can throw a guy off. Like me, for example, today on the return of serve. I felt like with some of the pace that Milan was giving me on the second serve, the fact that I wasn't able to get right power had to do with the incoming. Uh, ball's pace. So sometimes less pace can be really tricky. Other times less pace can be good if you're feeling on. So let's see what happens right here. Come on. Yes, see? Come on. It's too This is a tennis equilibrium. Net. Check out the video with Safin where I talk about tennis equilibrium. Just type in into oh. the tennis tennis equilibrium you'll see this is not going to be easy when you get hardcore. unlucky you will get lucky coach Nick's playing really, even really, really good shots end. if you lose a match where you see have guys, match points you're going to win a match is just staying focused down match points. if a guy is hitting a lead court because you'll hit a lead court or he'll hit the top of the net they'll roll back in my best shape given how at I play at the end of the day it all evens out and I'm not focused right, two, zero, I'm going to lose very easily and Milan I just thought of something yes are you talking a little bit yeah I'm talking too. It's gonna so, be so weird. it won't work, right? <laughs> it won't work, right? Yeah. I just thought of it. Okay. Wh why don't you just talk? I'll Let's wait. not talk at all. Okay. Let's just be quiet. Okay. It's, our quality is gonna go up anyway. Oh, 
Oh, that was long, right? Yeah, long. How about this? You're only allowed to talk when you're serving. Okay, sounds when good. When you're returning, you gotta shut up. Sounds good. All right, that was a horrible return. Okay, there's my comment. Two on me. Out. Ah, that does not feel. Man, my shoulder is so wrecked. Oh, I got burned! I got burned! I didn't follow it into the net. Heads up, and coach. Backpedal to the baseline, stuck in no man's land. Very poor. That was not good. I should have just come to the net. No, don't, don't second guess yourself. Come on, man, commit. Two all. Just realize my necklace keeps hitting the mic. I take my necklace off. This is a necklace I got for my first birthday. I oh, wore right. this necklace every day of my life since I was one. But you know what's funny? The most challenging part is my birthday. Staying focused. September the first tiebreaker. But moreover, when I think about it, all right, three to me. Is since we don't really. Milan, you can talk often. if you want. Okay. And he has such high speed ball. I need to just relax and follow through rather than stay on my back feet all the time. Okay. Uh, ah, sun. It's horrible. Uh, an easy one. Three all. I'm so happy this is being recorded live. It's like a feature. <laughs> Mistakes like this. <laughs> All right, three it happens. All right, so that was an easy mistake. But I don't think you guys understand how difficult it is to play Coach Nick. The way he plays really doesn't give you any rhythm. And he has such a powerful forehand. And serve, it's really, really difficult to control the ball. Four three. Yeah, four three. You. Okay, guys, I gotta shake off that volley mistake real fast because that was a my point. I didn't concentrate there. I was nonchalant. Ah, uh, great serve, coach. Hard to see on the side. <laughs> see, when I play tie breaks, dude, staying on serve is the most important to me. Holding serve is so key. It's always my number one goal in a tie break. Oh, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Long. I, on my back feet. I said something about this. Why am I playing on my back foot? Five for me. Long, long, Mila. <coughs> Was wide. See, you saw me moving. Oh, he's talking. Sorry. Milan, sorry about that. Okay. Okay, let's go. Four, six, right? Yes. See that? So good. Come on. Heads up, coach. Much better return and much better half court forehand. Four seven. Guys, if you want to know how to play those balls, 
Check out my lesson with Tremere. How to play the, the short forehand. It's a great lesson. We're going into depth on how to play these balls. The key is top spin, vertical swing pass. 7 4. I can't see anything over here. Yep. You want, you want to go again, coach? I can't serve either. What? You want to go again? Well, what do you mean? Uh, you made a double fold. No, we don't have to go again, but I have to switch sides, though. Okay. It's eight. It's seven five. Seven five, yeah. Twelve. Do you know last time we? Well, actually, not you and me. Last time we played. Yeah. We messed up the score. We did. We did. So on the wrong side. <laughs> Today I'm gonna pay attention. Yeah, seven five. Yeah. Your serve, one more. Seven five, my serve, yeah. Okay, seven five. It's hard for me to play without a serve, I'll be honest with you guys. Because I, my game so much depends on a good serve. It's very difficult. I'm going to go for placement. Down the tee. Out. Yeah. See, the problem is when I slow down, I start missing even more. That is the issue. I told you guys, his back end down the line is absolute world class. No wonder he beat Borna Goyo when he was in juniors. Milan, your back end down the line is an absolute masterpiece, my friend. Thank you. <laughs> Seven six. Good. Okay. Okay, two good points. Seven all. Now. Seven seven here? Yeah, seven all. So I played two good points. And what helped me is I wasn't afraid of stepping in, which is very, very important. We need to be able to get into the ball a little more rather than being so defensive all the time. Okay, let's go. Seven seven. Yeah, that's the one, you see. I'm still going back on the back foot. Best return I hit today. Rather than leaning into the shot. And now this would work with someone that's a little bit lower level. Well, my turn to talk, bud. Not that I'm going to say anything, but I don't want us to talk over each other. Okay. Uh, score? 8-7? Eight, 8-7, seven? Uh, seven, yeah. All right, two serves and it's over. Now, how in the world I'm going to get two serves and I don't know. That I don't know. That part is... That'll be the tricky part. Out. Out? I think, yeah. That's a tight call from me. Ah. <laughs> a very tight call. I believe it. He's a fair player. <laughs> Is that net? Well, well, definitely a light, but was it in or Yeah, right? yeah second serve, second serve. Okay, okay. <laughs> So hard to see. That was close. It looked a little bit wide, actually. Oh, this is called. I'm not going to call my own ball out. Second serve. <laughs> Half court struggles. So weak that forehand, man. Awful. <laughs> come on Nick man come on we'll get it together a couple more points you got this tie break come on man Adol oh. ah that was an ace first serve oh. first serve why? Uh, first serve. Oh, thanks, Milan. He's giving me a couple of calls there. I think, anyway. Uh, guys, what should I do with this first serve? T 
or wide? What's the better option? At eight all on the super thigh break, right in the chat. Won't be able to see the chat, but I might be able to see it afterwards. I'm gonna go T because I'm scared of his forehand. Ah! I have an empty mic. This is so bad. The half court game is disaster. It's a friggin' disaster, man. All right, so game point. Wow, that sucks. All right, no problem. I'm gonna take care of business right here. I got a little lucky this last one, okay? Very important to stay focused. Come on, come on. Come on! Now I gotta do math. Holy smokes. Nine all. Uh, let's see. Nine all is a... Uh... We switch again, yeah. right? It's nine all. Yeah. Okay, you hit one bad forehand, then you hit a good one. Yeah. It's the tennis equilibrium. <laughs> Here we go, nine all. Yeah, really, he gave me one and then... He had a great forehand there. Nine oh, come on, focus. Why am Come I going on. on my back foot? Why? Oh, I can talk. Ah, I wish I didn't have the mic, to be quite honest. The mic messes me up sometimes, so. Okay, I'm gonna go down the T. I'm gonna surprise him. He expects to get a back end, I'm gonna go T. But I can't serve hard, so I'm gonna have to go for placement. Great, sir. Yes. Yes, 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 Milan. Good job, Coach Nick. Not a high quality tie break, but hey, man. Yeah. We're tired, it's hot out here. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you, coach. Was that a birthday gift for me? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Tell me honestly. Don't lie to me. Did you give me this tiebreak as a gift? Or are you tried to win? Just a little bit. A little bit? <laughs> I knew it, man. No, hard to beat. Very hard to beat, coach. And guys, I don't oh. even think you understand how good he is. Okay, keep going. <laughs> keep going. Keep pumping yeah. me up. Come on. I won't it's stop it's you. his birthday today, too. So. Yeah, I won't stop you. Keep going. Keep pumping me up. No, but seriously, guys, coach Nick is a very, very high level player. And even though you may not seem like that, when you guys see a few of his mistakes or our streams, if you were to play him live, you would see how difficult it is to do anything, given how strong he hits and his ability to take out away your rhythm. It's a really, really hard matchup for sure. I often call myself a poor man's Ivo Kalovic. Yeah, it's very, very difficult yeah. to find any rhythm. Yep. You done? Yeah. Thank you for that, Milan. Of course, yeah. I appreciate it. <laughs> and guys, this is... Going to conclude today's live. Tune in again very soon on the Tour of Tennis 24 7 for another live. For all you guys that keep asking me about strings, I get so many comments. What's the orange string you're using? Well, I got an answer for you. It's the Kirschbaum Super Smash Orange. Go to my description, click on the link, type in code <laughs> NICK10. <laughs> the train again. <laughs> I hate the train again. Go in the description. Click the link and type in code NICK10, you get 10% off. Very good string for the recreational level. Highly recommend it. I'll see you guys next time. I'll see you guys. <laughs>